Hey everybody, welcome to Worship on Wednesdays. Wow, I'm glad you're joining us here this evening. Uh, we have worship planned and we have a devotion on how to overcome the world and to take heart in Christ. And so I hope the whole thing tonight just is a blessing. This is coming from my home, from the Combs home to your home, as we can continue to worship our great God. I'm glad you're joining us here for worship on Wednesdays. If you will please uh, take time now to join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you all glory. And Lord, we know that you are with us. And we know that um, you are surrounding us with your grace and your mercy and your love. We ask you tonight just to be with us as we sing songs of praise. Encourage us, lift us up. May we be strengthened because we've gathered uh, to worship you. And I pray in this short message that you'll speak to our hearts too and help us to not be overburdened or troubled in this world, but to take heart because you've overcome the world. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Let's worship. Jesus Christ. 
All right, it's time for devotion now, and uh, it's it's Wow Worship on Wednesday. Thank you, Shawnetta and Macy, for the awesome worship music. And today we're going to continue as we talk about uh, our devotional book about our journey to live in grace and to walk in love. So I hope you're enjoying this journey. Can't we all uh, learn a lot? And don't we all need to live more in grace? And don't we all need to walk more in love? I, I just... It's true for me. I don't know about you. Maybe maybe you got the grace thing and the love thing. You got that all down and, and there's no issues. But for me, I know I have to work on those things. So today we're going to be looking at page uh, 155, 155 and lesson 124. It's from a few days ago. And it's about Jesus won't eliminate the chaos in your life, but he will give it meaning. So... Man, how fitting. Um, whether we're talking COVID-19 or whether we're talking regular life when things get back to whatever that normal is going to be. It's chaos. So let's pray about the chaos on our life in our life and let's pray that God will allow us to use that chaos for his glory, for his meaning, his purposes. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you that we can turn to your word. Thank you that in the midst of life, you are always there bringing meaning. We pray that in all of our lives, even right now, even in this moment, you will use what's going on in us and around us, send us out into your world to be your disciples, to make a difference, to share the message of hope of the gospel. And uh, Lord, may we see the significance in what you're doing in our lives, bringing meaning each and every relationship we have, each and every moment that we have. And uh, Lord, we just thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. So looking at our lives, looking at what's going on, considering what uh, God is doing and how he's giving us meaning is what I want us to talk about tonight. And it comes again from page 155. So as we look at this lesson, I want to just read from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, Verse 33, listen to the word of the Lord. And it says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So Jesus is telling us from the get-go, listen, he's telling his disciples back then, he's telling us now as disciples now, that there is going to be trouble in this world. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be... Uh, things that don't go your way. There are going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations. There's going to be persecution, maybe prosecution. There's going to be pandemics. There's going to be natural disasters. There's going to be all kinds of things. Uh, things are not going to go perfect, even for you. The world is complicated. The world is chaotic. It didn't take you long to figure that out. Now, maybe as a kid, you can your parents sheltered you from it, or you're just kind of free spirit. But when you grow up, eventually you figure out that there's trouble all around. And the more you become a Christian and the more you, you, you can discern between the world and you in life and what you're doing as a Christian, so uh, the world and then a Christian worldview, you see there's a difference and there's trouble. So Jesus is telling us both take heart. No, I have overcome the world. Those things that you struggle with, know that, that I'm in charge of those things. I have got those things under my control, I've overcome those things. So Christ calls us like he's an overcomer to become an overcomer too, so that we can uh, live for Christ. So, you know, he, he came to rescue us. Jesus came to be a rescuer. We don't have our act all together. We don't have this whole thing figured out. Um, life, we're not exempt from life. We're not exempt from tragedy. In fact, Jesus in different places talks about the righteous and unrighteous experiencing the same things. We all live in this fallen world. Every single one of us, we live in the fallen world. So we're not exempt from these things. So these troubles are going to come our way. I think sometimes we can think, maybe if, if you know, as a Christian, God will take care of all this. He'll get rid of all this. 
and I, I won't have to deal with this anymore. And that is just not true. I know TV evangelists say those things and you know, you hear people talk about that and you can hear people and I'm not here to bash Joel Holstein, but you know, the, the positive, everything, just everything's good. Bless me, bless me, bless me. And God wants to bless us and God wants things to be positive. But Jesus is a realist and Jesus tells us troubles are coming. Just because you're a follower of me, you're not exempt from these things. But what you can do, here's the positive message. Take heart because I've overcome the world. So where the world brings its troubles, where sin steps in, Jesus says, I've overcome. And Jesus came to rescue us. He came to make our lives more purposeful. He came to give us meaning. He came to make us more like him. So how do we learn to overcome the chaos in our life? How do we learn to see um, the glass is half empty? No, half full, right? We want, you know, the difference in perspective. How, how do we learn to do that? Well, by trusting Jesus has overcome the world, by trusting that we can be overcomers like Jesus is, by trusting that Jesus is working in our lives to give us purpose, even in these troubling times. So even in COVID-19, listen, make no mistake about it, Jesus has overcome the world. This virus, I've said this over and over, it's not caught God off guard. You know, we keep getting probably irritated by the statements as we're in this all together. And uh, in these unscripted or trying times, <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It's real. So even though we might get aggravated by those things, and it's it's like a broken record, it's a broken record. Jesus is saying, I've overcome the world. Don't worry about it. I got this thing. You know, and we can take heart in that. We can be encouraged by that. See, he brings meaning to all the circumstances of our life. And we really can't begin to experience the fullness of life until we begin to experience Christ in our lives. And so if we have Christ, we're at a different position than the rest of the world right now. We can see things differently. We can see the things of God differently. We can see this virus differently. We can approach things differently. At least we should have. We should, right? Um, God has invited us into his story. So how did God, how did in Christ, how did he overcome the world? And look, we can say a lot of things. He came in righteousness. He came and he lived a spotless life and, and he, you know, all these things. And it is true. He came to rescue us. He was atonement for our sins. He, he took our place upon that cross. He who knew no sin became sin. The atonement and that type of theology that's deeply enriched in us, the salvation that we have in Christ, those are all real. But when it comes down to how Christ overcame the world, it's how he lived. He he lived a life of grace. He lived a life of mercy. He lived a life of love. When we look at the life of Christ, yes, what he did on the cross, you know, please don't anybody, uh, we need to acknowledge that that's, that's eternal. But Jesus modeled for his disciples and for you and me what it's like to live by grace and love and mercy. And what did he do? Go read the Gospels. Go read them. What you're going to see is his redemptive work upon the cross was built upon his life. What Jesus did was love us. He loved us. He knew while we were sinners, he would die for us. He knew Romans 5, 8 would happen. He knew, he knew, he knew that we're sinners. He knew what we were like. He knew that uh, we're flawed. He knew that we are fallen in our nature. He knew that we needed to be redeemed. He knew we needed to be forgiven. He knew, he knew that life in its fallen state is evil and messed up at times and chaotic. He knew, he knew this, but he came to give it meaning. How did he do that? He touched a leper and made him whole. A woman touched the hem of his garment and was healed of a blood issue. A little girl died and Jesus spoke to her and she came to life. Jesus was there to minister to Mary and Martha in their sorrow and say, I'm the resurrection and the life. Believe in me. And then later he would speak, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus would walk on the sea and beckon Peter to come walk with him. Jesus would 
save a, save a marriage, save a wedding by turning water into wine. Jesus would save a fisherman's career by filling nets with fish so full that they burst open and they couldn't even bring them all in. Jesus would touch the ordinary, the, li- the troubles of life, the circumstances of our life, and he would beckon us to come follow him. He would do that over and over again. He would do that with Nicodemus, a Pharisee, and say, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus would question him, and Jesus would explain, you've got to be born of water and of spirit. Jesus would do that with the woman at the well and the Samaritan lady and would tell her that he had living water to give to her. If she would just drink it, she would never thirst again. Over and over again, we would see Jesus getting involved in lives, bringing meaning to their lives by his grace, by his love, by his mercy, by his presence. And listen, because he would be a part of it, And Jesus is no different, yet the cross helps us. The cross pulls us into redemption. The cross atones us of our sin. The work of what Jesus did is beyond anything. It's eternal. It gives us eternal life. But in the here and now, Jesus says, I've come. Listen, I have overcome the world. So he's telling us to take heart in him. And he lived it. He showed us how to be an overcomer of the world. We want to be more like Jesus. We want to live by his grace and his love and his mercy. You know, he doesn't uh, uh, magically erase all of our problems, all of our sins. If you've lost your job, if you're sick right now, if you get COVID-19 or you know someone that's died and all the stuff we're struggling with, people, my staff were talking today about the loss that people are experiencing, whether you've lost a loved one, which uh, we prayed for families when Ruth Ellen's father passed away. I I know a friend of mine, R.L. Fitzpatrick. There's people we know that have died recently in, in this season of life we know that there are people that will not graduate they're graduating but they won't they won't get to graduate from college or high school in the normal way there are people that are in in school that are missing experiences that they would have had there there are people that are having to work differently there are people that are just struggling in life right now they're isolated they're alone they're depressed there's others that just feel like we should just go on and just get back to life and normal stuff and there's there's all kinds of stuff pushing 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 on us the world the world it's all around us and you know jesus is not gonna take away all of those things they're they're there the troubles are there but we can take heart we can believe in him we can trust in him We can know that he overcame the world, and because he overcame the world, we too can overcome the world. You see, the blessing is that Jesus gets in the midst of our troubles and can bring meaning into our world. And when Jesus does that, it's an amazing thing. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you right now to to turn to Jesus in your troubles, whatever's going on in your life, None of us are living a normal life right now. It's not, it's not what we expected. It's not what any of us wanted. It's not what any of us asked for, but it's the reality that we live in. And I just want to encourage you right now to know that even though we're facing these trying times and it's not normal, that God is with us and that Jesus, the same words he spoke to his disciples, he tells us now. In this world, you will have troubles, but take heart. Take heart. Disciple of Jesus Christ, take heart, because Jesus has overcome the world. God bless you. Join us Sundays at 10 a.m. for digital worship service with Lexington Park Baptist Church. You can find us at facebook.com slash Lexington Park Baptist. On weekdays at noon, you have Word of Encouragement, Whoa, with Pastor Chris McCombs. On Monday evenings at 7 p.m., we have digital community groups. We also have Sunday college and career at 6 p.m. and youth at 5 p.m. 
Please contact Pastor Joe Fessler for more information about the Sunday groups and Monday groups. We have Woe Worship on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Join us as the McCombs home reaches into your home with live worship to encourage you midweek.